This koala may look content, but is facing an uncertain future. In southeast Queensland, population seems to be on the decline, severe decline. It's estimated more than 80% of koala populations in this area have already been lost. Disease, dog attacks and road strikes all taking a toll. But the greatest threat is their vanishing habitat. Basically, there's a certain amount of habitat that is available for animals to live in. We often have to make a choice where to put a road or a new development. And so that's decreasing the habitat. These scientists are on a mission to identify and protect the areas where koalas still live and have enlisted the help of a new four-legged recruit. Are we good to go? Meet Maya, the world's first and only koala scat detection dog, a super sleuth pup with a unique skill set. So Maya's job is to help us humans do a better job finding koala poo. Did she say koala poo? The great thing with dogs is they can smell what we can't see. Um, koala poo smells very much of eucalyptus, and so they can help us locate scats very easily. <gasps> is that your boy? You want it? You ready? You ready? Fine, Maya, fine. Weaving back and forth, nose to the ground, Maya searches the undergrowth. But why search for scat and not koalas themselves? Koalas are cryptic creatures. Their low numbers and cunning camouflage makes them notoriously hard to find. But they poo up to 150 times a day. And the poo stay in the environment for many months, sometimes years, which means that if you arrive in a site and there's no koala, you might find their evidence on the ground. And that tells you that's koala habitat. Bye, Maya. Koalas move around. So you don't only want to protect the habitat where they feed, you need to protect the habitat where they sleep, where they move. And it's a, it's a much bigger habitat than we think of. This gives scientists a more complete picture as they can see all the places where koalas have been, not just where they are. Where is it? Where is it? Do you see? She just pointed at it with her nose and then she dropped. You're such a good girl, Maya. Well done. A job well done is rewarded with play. You're such a good girl, Maya. If you think about it, dogs don't go to work for a salary. They go to work because for them it's play. And while Maya loves her job, the researchers love her results. You can see how small they are and they're so easily obscured in the litter. So for a human to see that, it's really hard. Bye, Maya. Bye. You need a lot of stamina because you have to cover a lot of ground and look under each tree for scats. For Maya, that's not a problem. She, she is playing and she has high stamina. So she's 20 times faster at finding the scats. But most importantly for conservation, she's 150% more accurate. So that means that she's finding scats where humans are not. And for habitat protection, this is critical. When we tested her against a team of humans doing the same survey in the same area under the same trees, she actually found 30% more of the site with koala present. If you're missing 30% of their habitat, you have no chance of protecting it. That's actually a really big bias. It's actually frightening. <laughs> Maya's accuracy and efficiency is giving scientists a powerful new tool for koala conservation. That should do us, eh? That should be fine. The scat can also tell the scientists about koalas themselves, and this sample will be taken back to the lab for analysis. Okay. You're such a good girl, Maya. Well done. But Maya's story wasn't always so bright. Before she was on the job saving koalas, Maya was just an hour away from death row. So we met, met Maya uh, in a pound, and um, she was actually abandoned there. And because she was so obsessed by her tennis ball, she was deemed not rehomeable. So she was actually um, going to be put down. Thankfully for Maya, the qualities that make a less than perfect pet are exactly what the team were looking for. It was um, a win-win 
for her, she got a second family, and for us, we pretty much got the best detection dog we could wish for. All right, so let's start with the koala. Yep. Yeah, so that's position number 26. To stay at the top of her game, Maya must constantly hone her sniffing skills. So she undergoes regular training. Today's test will see how well she can tell one type of poo from another. So it's very simple because we don't want to take her in the bush and for her to start indicating on possum pool or eastern grey pool. We want to make sure that Maya knows so what koala, koala poo is and exclude any other marsupial pool. Yeah. And number 30, you've got one bat pool. A discrimination trial, it's a very important part of the trialling and training of our dogs. The way that we do this is we have 30 spots around a circle. We use a computer to generate random numbers so that we will put different types of pools at different locations for each different trials. Ready? Ready? Changing up the position each time prevents this cluey canine from learning and remembering the location of the koala poo. They even put some empty containers to keep her on her toes. Maya, Maya, you're on the ball, Maya, Maya. You ready? Fine, Maya, fine. The test also helps the researchers learn more about detection dogs. Basically, no method is perfect in science, so we always want to trial, test, and understand the limitation of the method we're using. We're not always 100%, and, and probably dogs aren't either. So we just want to really understand whether they have good days and bad days, and just um, make sure we integrate that in the result of the research. Back in the lab, the scat is analysed. From the scats, you can find out a lot about the animal and you can tell a story. This is because when the poo passes through the koala's bowel, it actually collects little bits of DNA. You can extract genomic DNA and that tells us I can have a fingerprint about an individual, I can know its sex, if it's a female or a male. We can also extract things like diet. Um, we are also looking at chlamydia disease, at genetic diversity, reproduction and other, other factors. This information helps answer the bigger questions of the team's research. Is there a link between human pressures, koala health and their population decline? And can we at certain point find this threshold, this tipping point where suddenly the, the habitat in which they live is, is too urbanised that it stresses them so much that then their immunity crashes and disease takes over? My is key to this. Uh, are we can do what we do if we weren't using detection dogs. You're such a good girl, Maya. What a job.